Hello everyone and thanks for tuning back in. Alessandro the Crypto here. I hope you're doing all fine. So welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna analyze and compare the CME chart to the spot chart because we have two completely different charts at the moment. So we have to give a look at both. And at the end, I will also show you the yearly chart for Bitcoin, which proves you that this is a very important year that you accumulate as much as possible Bitcoin and also hold it at least till the end of this year. So my friends, let's start straight into the four hour time frame here on the spot chart, because as you can see, currently Bitcoin is still struggling here to fight the resistance that we have here at around $34,000 after this fake out that we had here to the upside. And currently here we are still trading below the 200 moving average in the four hour time frame. The only bullish thing that we have currently here in the spot chart is the RSI because as you can see we are bouncing from the 50 level and that of course is a good sign and this indicates that we will most likely have a big bounce to the upside and therefore also see here a big breakout to the upside from this resistance. The only problem is that currently we are still not able to close four hour candles above the 200 moving average and therefore we should be also prepared for the bearish scenario that we're gonna lose here the 50 level in the RSI and we're gonna drop towards our next potential support down here at around $28,000. So the sell signal that we had here in my own indicator is still in play and as you can see money flow is still a negative so we should expect at any time here in the next couple of hours potential continuation to the downside and that is what makes me a bit believe that we could revisit this 30k to $28,000 maybe even during this weekend or next week and also if we go over into the Bollinger Bands you can see that we are right in the middle line here so if we are not able to close four hour candles again above $34,000 we will see a potential drop towards $30,800 and then potentially even overshoot it to the downside towards $28,000 and we have also MACD and KST with a bearish cross so that could lead into this correction the only bullish thing here is the stochastic which is already in oversold condition so let's see if this is enough to bring the price again above $34,000 and therefore again fight the resistance that we have at $36,000 I think if we are able to go towards $36,000 and also close four hour candles above then this could be a valid breakout if we're gonna have confirmation not like here when we had no confirmation we came down and we didn't got support here at the previous resistance so what we wanted to see here was that we were able to close for our candles above $36,000 and move towards new levels to the upside and also take out this $42,000 all-time high it didn't happen we crashed immediately again below all the moving averages and right now we're struggling again to push higher so the four hour time frame in the spot chart is looking a bit more bearish my friends and now if we go over into the CME chart here you can see that on Friday we closed above our previous resistance so above $34,000. So where the CME is closed on Friday was actually very bullish place because we were above the resistance so in theory we could have confirmed this as a new support and also as you can see here we never came below the 200 moving average in the four hour time frame. So you see that the CME chart and the spot chart is completely completely different on the spot chart it looks like that we're trading on the bearish side below the 200 moving average and on the CME we are still trading above the 200 moving average and usually the CME chart tells the truth so usually the CME chart is the chart that we should give the most significance but of course it is also possible that here we're gonna see the crash next week and then start to trade below the 200 moving average so that's why it's going to be very very important to see where the CME is going to start trading again on Monday and if we're able to keep up with the moving averages here because here we are still in an uptrend in the CME chart in the four hour time frame and now let's go over to the spot chart and open up the daily time frame because also here you can see that we closed now below the 20 daily moving average and we're squeezing here between the 20 and 9 daily moving average 
The good thing is that we have here in the spot chart now a confirmed buy signal and also the RSI is trading above the 50 level. So that could be an initial good sign that we will see continuation and breakout here to the upside. The only problem is this 20 daily moving average. We have to close daily candles above these important moving average in order to go here to the upside and take out the old all time high. Otherwise, if we are starting here to close daily candles, Again, below the nine daily moving average, which currently is in an uptrend because we're closing candles above. And that suggests that we will see here potential continuation to the upside, which of course is bullish. But if we're starting to close below, then most likely we're going to retest here the 50 daily moving average at 30K. And if this one will not hold, if we're gonna drop below and test this important support level at $28,000, there we should see then another big bounce to the upside. Otherwise, if we're gonna fall below, Below, then we're gonna most likely test our next potential big supports area first here at the 100 daily moving average at $24,000 this also acted previously as a resistance and now it should be acting as a new support and if 24 will not hold we will go straight down towards a 200 daily moving average here at around $20,000 this is the worst case scenario if here we are getting back into a downtrend and we will not hold this important support that we have still here at $28,000. So here in the spot chart, the daily time frame still looks bullish, but of course here we also have to wait for daily closes above the 20 or below the nine daily moving average to see where Bitcoin is gonna head to next in the next couple of days and weeks. And if we compare it now to the CME chart here, the daily time frame here, you can see that in the CMEs, we are still trading above the 20 daily moving average. So on Friday, we close exactly at the 20 daily moving average and also above our resistance line, which currently is here at $34,000. We are also above the 50 level in the RSI and got here a buy signal in my own indicator. So in theory here on the CME chart, we are still in an uptrend and we should see here big continuation to the upside pretty soon but of course also here we have to wait and see where the CMEs are going to open tomorrow on Monday to see if we are still able to close daily candles and stay above the 20 and 9 daily moving average. So I would say in the CMEs and also in the spot chart the daily time frame is looking a bit more bullish and we should expect here very soon a breakout to the upside hopefully because if not we most likely are coming down to test here this $28,000 area. And if we go over now into the weekly time frame, here you can see again that the RSI is still cooling off here a bit, but we are still far away from the 50 level. I still think that if we're gonna see continuation of this correction or if we're gonna stay within this falling wedge for the next couple of days and weeks, we most likely gonna cool off here completely the RSI down to the 50 level before we're gonna create a bottom and then jump again towards new higher levels. So the weekly time frame here is still looking bullish, even though we could still see here a major correction towards a 20 weekly moving average, which currently is at $20,000. We're gonna update this moving average tomorrow because then it will be way higher than right now. And if we compare it now to the CME chart, here we have a very similar situation. We came down to the nine weekly moving average. We tested it, we had a nice bounce from it. But if also here we have to cool off the RSI down to the 50 level, there is a very high chance that we come down here to test here the 20 weekly moving average right at 20K. So the weekly time frame is looking exactly the same like in the spot chart. And here again, you can see all the CME gaps that we have still below of us, especially this one here at $23,000 is still a bit concerning. And that's why I think if we're gonna see continuation to the downside in the next coming week or maybe even through whole February, then we could potentially see here the 20 weekly moving average retest close this big CME gap that we can even see in the weekly time frame and then gear up again to new levels so now let's go back to the spot chart let's open up also the monthly time frame because the monthly time frame currently is looking a bit concerning to me we have now a big week to the upside and if we're gonna close this monthly candle here in this area this could be a bearish sign because that usually indicates that in the next coming weeks and maybe even months we're gonna see some price movements in the opposite direction and that's why there is still a high chance that we maybe even come down here to test the nine monthly moving average which currently is at $17,000 
Of course, also this moving average will be higher tomorrow because we're gonna have a monthly close today. So tomorrow we are going also to update this moving average as soon as we start the new month because in my opinion, this will also come up here towards the 20K area, which is also the 0.618 Fibonacci retracement based on the bottom that we had at 3,800 and the local all-time high of 42,000 dollar and if we compare it now to the dxy here the monthly time frame also here you can see that the nine monthly moving average is right here at exactly the same place so although tomorrow this moving average most likely will come up here towards the 18 or 20 thousand dollar area where in my opinion if we're gonna see a massive sell-off we could be bottoming out and then have a big bounce to the upside but this is only if we are seeing a potential bigger correction in the next coming days and weeks if bitcoin is able to start now to close daily candles above the nine daily moving average and have a successful breakout here to the upside and take out also the highs that we had here at $38,000 and especially the old all-time high here of $42,000 then I think we will go straight towards new levels way above $50,000 and $60,000. So if you still need to buy some Bitcoin my friends don't wait and hope for a big sell-off towards 20 k because at the end it really doesn't matter if you're buying right now at 30 k or at 20 k because Bitcoin anyway will go way above above 100k we have done several videos which proves you that we will go to completely new levels in the next coming months and years and another chart that I want to show you right now is the yearly candles chart for Bitcoin because this chart proves you again why it is very very important that especially during this year you're accumulating as much Bitcoin as possible and also hold it no matter what the price is doing so if we're gonna see corrections or pullbacks try to buy as much as you can and don't go and take profits or panic sell on the way up until we're gonna reach the targets way above 100k and here in the yearly chart my friends you can clearly see that Bitcoin is since its inception always in an uptrend we had of course several corrections sometimes even a full year with price corrections but at the end we always recovered created new higher lows and higher highs and that's why especially this year it is very important that you are accumulating and holding at least till we're gonna reach these price targets way above 100k and what I want to show you in this chart is that if we are starting here in 2013 you can see that we had one year with a massive pump then the next year huge correction in 2014 then 2015 we had a little recover but most of the time we were just trading sideways then 2016 when the halving happened we had a little pump and then the year after in 2017 we had this huge massive bull run that took us towards 20 Okay, and afterwards another bear market started same like after 2013 we had one year of a massive dump we came from 14,000 down to $3,000 similar like we had in 2014 then the year after in 2019 we were just trading sideways most of the time same like in 2015 then 2020 came with a nice pump and of course also with our halving similar like in 2016 and guess what is happening in 2021 this is the year where we're gonna see these massive pumps like we have seen here in 2017 and also in 2000. 13. So that's why my friends I think if this chart doesn't prove you how bullish Bitcoin is looking like in this year and also what are the predictions for this year then I really don't know how to convince you. I hope that this chart is showing you that Bitcoin will go to way higher levels this year and at the end it really doesn't matter if you're buying right now at $30,000 or at 20 k so even now with this healthy correction down to the nine weekly moving average this is already a good buy if you're entering and buying more bitcoin right now in the worst case scenario if you're really falling towards 20k then there i think you should be going all in because you will never be able again to buy bitcoin at those cheap prices 
And with that said guys, I'm gonna wrap it up for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. If you still need any kind of account like over on Binance, Coinbase or wherever you need to open an, up an account then use my referral links down below here because you will get some extra money if you use my invitation links. And also if you want to trade Bitcoin and other cryptos with leverage then try out Bybit and Femex. Those are the exchanges that I'm also using. So use my referral links to support the channel and also get Get some extra cash and currently there are some rumors that the Wall Street bets people want to push XRP by tomorrow 1st of February so if you want to jump into this train if you think that they really gonna pump XRP like crazy tomorrow and you're not holding any XRP then maybe try to long XRP over on Bybit because here you can long XRP with your tether even if you don't have any XRP otherwise just buy a little bag of XRP and then go long over on Bybit if you want to profit as much as possible without putting too much money into XRP if you think that they really are going to pump this coin by tomorrow there are big rumors currently so if you're not holding XRP or if you're not a fan of XRP and you don't want to have heavy bags of this coin which in my opinion is really not worth to take the risk to buy XRP I would prefer to buy Ethereum Litecoin and so on than XRP but if you want to take a trade here on this possible pump that is going on tomorrow then maybe just buy a little bag and then put it here on Bybit and go long because if the price is really pumping like crazy and if you're sitting in a nice long position then of course you can do some very huge gains like that and don't forget also to join our free discord trading chat you find the link down below here we have a very great crypto family over there please join it is completely for free and this is also the place where you can get access to my own indicator which is showing you buy and sell signals for bitcoin if you want to get access to it you can only do that over on discord for a small donation of course so thank you again very much for watching my friends and we're gonna see us all in the next one Bye.